Well, good Saturday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope uh, you're having a great Saturday afternoon. We're going to be doing our Zoom call with our fan channel members at 5 o'clock. Hope you guys are there with us. Um, you know, here's the thing that's kind of cool, uh, or interesting, I should say. I've been doing YouTube here, really, really kind of, you know, uh, putting full effort into it um, since 2016. Back then, that's when we started doing live streams on Mondays and Fridays. There wasn't a whole lot of people out there. I remember in about, I want to say 2017 or 18 is when the Dallas Cowboys started their YouTube channel. And I remember having more subscribers than them. And then I lost that channel. But it's been steady growth, not, not like the Dallas Cowboys YouTube channel, mind you, but nice steady growth. And the space is getting more and more crowded. I get people that all the time say, hey, you know, how, what can I do to start my channel or any words of advice? And of course, now ESPN, the people that, of course, used to shun us and used to look at us as the redheaded stepchildren and belittle people in social media now their survival depends on what they do in social media and you're seeing you know like club shay shay you know with uh shannon sharp and stuff doing incredible things you see the pivot podcast you're getting great content and you're getting closer and closer to the players and it's actually good because it's another avenue of possibilities of things for players to be able to do after they're done with football. You know, me, I've got to probably work till the day I die because there's no money in YouTube for me or, or in construction work and things. But as a football player, you may have a three, four year career or even if you have a long one like Tom Brady until your early 40s, there's still a whole lot of life left to live. And, you know, it's good that they have something else to fall back on. And so you're seeing more and more players with, of course, YouTube channels and things like that. Big Hank, you know, our defensive tackle has got his YouTube channel. Jonathan Hankins is called the Big Time Talk. And he had... Jake Ferguson, it's about a 53 minute long um, uh, video and stuff. And if you really want to get to know Jake Ferguson, I, I, I say definitely go check it out. I've watched it and I wanted to take a couple of excerpts from it. Hopefully Big, big, big uh, Hank won't copyright me for it, but definitely giving him a shout out and definitely check out his channel and subscribe to it as well. But getting to know a little bit more about Jake Ferguson, Jake Ferguson definitely his grandfather is truly a major part of his life and a lot of things that shaped him. Um, he seems to be very, very funny, um, enjoys life, and he's got all, all kinds of incredible goals. But I want to show you guys two different things. One, he's talking about Dak Prescott and his relationship with him and his first impressions of Dak Prescott. So let's go to the tape here. Nah. That's dope. Uh, what, would you, what would you say your first impression of when you met Dak? Dak? Yeah. This is funny. You know, he, te he, texted, he, texted me, he texted me right when I got drafted. He's like, hey, man, like the typical, like, hey, man, welcome yep. to Dallas. And I'm drunk as hell. I go, <laughs> I, I go, hey, folks, I'm catching everything hey, coming my way. <laughs> catching everything. He, I got no response. No. No. And then, uh, yeah, we just... I think he th he lasered one at, to me at OTAs, and he goes, "I thought you're catching everything." I just started dying. Like I'm, <laughs> like you know, the the media portrays him crazy, but he's just a dude, like a funny dude, funny yeah. guy. Like a, I love him. Now nah, he's hilarious. But um, his his growth from last year to the, this year, I definitely saw it. Um, oh yeah. I, I just came to the conclusion, bro. No matter how good he do, always. no matter what happened, it's it's, it's gonna always be a, a negative and a good. And there's always more negative than good just from being a cowboy, man. Yeah, always. That's fine. So, yeah. So that, there's the first take right there. So his first time talking with Dak, he's tore up being a rookie, just drafted into the NFL. Um, this is how he feels about the season ending and 
Dak Prescott because we, we've got a whole lot of takes. You know, there's so many of you out there that say just get rid of Dak Prescott. He's a bum and so on. We suck and everything else. But listening to Ferguson, who had eight TDs on the season. I don't know if you guys realize he was number two in receptions for the team this year and has literally uh, been, I will say, the best tight end play we've had since Jason Witten was a little bit younger. He was that good, and you look at him to become a really great playmaker for him. Let's go to the tape one more time. So, but I looked up to him so much. You know, he was – He, I think he's a better athlete than me. Yeah. He just didn't get the size. Yeah. Like I'm every every guy in my family six foot, and I'm six foot. Like it's <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got blessed with everything. That's normally how I go. The, the youngest get all the good traits, and oh, yeah. I'm the youngest. But no, that's 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 fly. Uh, obviously, end of the season. Um, how did you feel about the playoff game, and you know what did you think happened? I'm stinging. Uh, I just, I guess the one thing that I always that I've kind of realized being here is everybody wants to kill us. Like mm -hmm. Everybody's going to bring their A game. Everybody's when they're going to hate us when we're down. They're going to love us when we're up, but they're going to, they're going to try to kill us yeah. and we can't, well, we need to go out and kill them first. Like we yeah. need to go early, set the tone early, let them like, let them know. All right, we're not laying down. Like you're going to, you're going to either way you're bleeding after this one. You know what I mean? Uh, Obviously, it stings, but, you know, having three touchdowns, did you feel good about that? You know what I mean? Nah, I mean, I, in, in a sense, letting Dak know, letting them know, like, hey, you can throw these. You can put them up. I'm going to go get them. Yeah. Um, but, nah, I mean, I remember I was catching them and just setting the ball down and going straight to the sideline. Like, we got to go. Yeah. Like, nah, I feel tough. Like, I mean, yeah. I just care about winning. I don't. I'm not a huge stack guy, anything like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I know the media always got something to say bad about us. But um, you, be, I believe in Dak. But do you think Dak is, you know, the quarterback that's gonna get us to that Super Bowl? Hell yeah! I'm, I'm with him till the wheels fall off. Yeah, the wheels fall off. Best year, I think he didn't had. And yeah, and, it, and it wasn't perfect. No, it wasn't. wasn't perfect at all. I mean. Knowing him, how hard he works, like he's only, he only gets better. A lot better, bro. Shoot, I mean, his his new daughter might, he might have some crazy oh. dad strength coming too. He might That's be, a real thing, bro. Mm -hmm. swear, so. It's lethal. Yeah. I'm not sure when you and your lady thinking about it, but when nah, you do have a, 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 a little one, <laughs> it's a different vibe, a different motivation. Yeah. It's a different way you carry yourself. You know, and it definitely benefits you. 100%. 100%. Um, what are some of the positives you took away from this season, man? I just look at, I feel it, uh, it was a big growing, growing year. You know, the person who I was the first game compared to the last game is completely different, you know, on and off the field. Um, I think I made, I made, personally, I made the right steps and then, this team, I think, you know, it sucked the way we went out first round exit, but yeah, you know what? That might be the the spark that it's like, all right, well, like, yeah, we made the playoffs, yeah, we twelve win season, but you know, last year we did that same thing and we were out first round. Like, it's a whole, it's gonna boost the mindset. Say we ain't gonna think any different till we win that thing. Yeah, no, I think this is um. Obviously, it's a bad taste, but this is something that's, you know, when I, or if I do come back, this is something that's going to be, like, the drive force of the team. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. Everybody that went through this that's coming back, now it's like everything really going to be really tight and, you know, really just being on our keys and knowing everything because, you know, the, little, the moment we got to play this game and, to get to a Super Bowl, it ain't. Yeah, margin of error is tiny. Yeah. There you go. So, um, all right, well, we're going to leave that right there, but definitely check it out. It's 53 minutes long. I just wanted to kind of go there because, you know, we've got so much, you know, get rid of Dak, trade Dak, and everything else, you know, from the outside of people who don't necessarily know what's going on. You'll hear, of course, Skip Bayless trying to tell you what's going on in the locker room. And, you know, let's get it from the horse's mouth. Let's see what the players think about him. 
So there you have it. All right, good people. See you guys real soon. Peace out.